Hello and welcome to chapter 8 of YMT 218 Object Oriented Programming. So we are discussing a uh, deeper view of strings. So this chapter is actually discuss discussing or presenting more ideas or more understanding of strings. So let's go to the topics. We will be discussing basic string operations, uh, string slicing, test string, searching and manipulating uh, strings. By the way, whatever we will discuss in this chapter is just the beginning of strings. Strings are extremely deep and uh, extensive topic that needs actually uh, more than one chapter and we will see while uh, solving some practical questions. But, however, what we will be doing at the moment is just giving the basic idea or the basic understanding or elaborating the concepts so that you can um, grow your uh, knowledge about uh, strings slowly, one by one. Well, so strings by themselves are a special type of sequences. We explained this before while explaining the lists and tuples, so uh, they are a very special actually type of sequences and they have very special char characteristics with um, tuples and lists that is why we can consider them uh, somehow in between it's one of the um, sequences that have similar um, operations and methods uh, applied like can be applied to lists or tuples or sometimes cannot be applied to lists and tuples but it, there are common things between those. Why? Now I'll explain why common. Simply because we have a, a list of characters. That, that means a sequence of characters in a string. And what does it mean? It means it's exactly some sort of sequence connected to one name. And that's why we deal with it as a sort of a sequence that we can um, apply similar similar operations to lists and tuples. But not everything for sure, but we will see. And these operations are extremely useful. Uh, one more thing, strings are actually uh, widely available and uh, applied in many uh, disciplines. Uh, you may think about uh, word processing. So we may have many different files of strings and text um, applications. So we need some special applications for strings in Python. All right. So imagine we have a string, and this string is a series of characters. Any, any, any character possible that we have in our language or the language that we are dealing with. Uh, at the moment in programming. So how can we iterate over the string? We can use for loop and this will allow us to iterate similar to the list before we took this one for loop and then we present the name of the list and uh, sorry we present the name of the list here and we say let's say x or i or whatever element or item in that list. Now the very similar uh, or it is actually the same except for the name of the list we will change it to the name of the string so that is the idea we can iterate over the uh, string by just presenting the name of the string and what will happen is we will take the characters one by one in the string instead of items of the list we will just be getting or extracting the um, characters of the string okay so this is uh, one of the ways that we can extract or actually iterate over the string elements. One more thing, a string itself can be considered one special type of a list. What does it mean? It means that we have indexes for all characters available in the string, starting by zero. This is the first index, the first character in the string, ending by the length of the string minus one. So the first index in any string is zero is very similar to the uh, first index of a list and the last one is the length of string minus one or the size of the string minus one what apply what applies to lists applies also to strings so we can have the length uh, function which is len len that provides us the length of the uh, str string and we will not make any um, 
index error or mistake. Why? Let's say you are trying to access or retrieve a certain index by the subscript notation. So this i is valid from 0 until length minus 1 or len string minus 1. If you try to access something beyond the length minus 1, then you will have an index error. So in that case, you will have an exception and you need to uh, provide some exception handler for such a case so that your program doesn't halt. Okay, look at the uh, iteration type. This is just a simple example. When we iterate over a name, which is a string, what happens? We take the first character in the first iteration. For example, here is J. The second iteration will take the next, the third iteration, next and next and next. This is very similar to the list. So it takes the first item, first iteration, second item, second iteration, and so on until last iteration, last item. Here, first iteration, takes the first character in the string, second iteration takes the second item in the string and goes on until the last iteration takes the last item in the string uh, or character in the string. So when we speak about items in a string, we speak about characters, not actually items of lists, because lists may have any type of uh, data, including lists themselves. So we may have a list of lists and we explain about this in two dimensional lists. All right, look at these examples. Let's say we have uh, a string called Python. Now this string could be a literal string. Uh, we just define it directly. It's not necessarily that uh, string. It's not necessarily that this string is referenced by a name. It can be. It can be directly like this. So if we have a direct uh, literal string available in this loop, we will just loop from the beginning of the of the string until the end and we can display the elements. Now we, we specify the end of the display by just a space. That means we will display each and every uh, character of the string and then a small space, just one space between it and the next uh, element or in this case next character. So this is the way it will be displayed. The first character space, second character space and so on. Uh, think about another string. Now we may have another string like this, object-oriented programming. Uh, the string can take up to uh, whatever number of uh, characters. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have exactly a limit, but it, it depends on your application. So the application type determines the limit or the end of the string, how many characters available in the string. So now we can iterate using another way how. We move from the uh, beginning of the string, that means from index 0. Let's say we uh, uh, assign this index to a variable, let's say we call it i, and we use the range function. And we limit our range to the length of the uh, string minus 1. So when we use length, this length, len, will get us the length of the string. So the length of the string is the number of characters. However, we cannot uh, loop until the last element. And you know the range function starts from 0 until the last element or the element available here minus 1 inclusively. So the element available here will not be included. And that's the uh, size of the string. So the number of characters, you can count them, all of them, including the spaces, including this. Uh, whatever minus or dash okay so it will dis display display what the characters by index so we are using index now in fact this uh, course is not exactly a list however we can use the subscript notation here to get the indexes of the string as i said this is a special type of sequence and this applies to it so we can retrieve these indexes of the string using this subscript notation. This is possible. So in this case, um, I put no space. It will just display it the way it is. And that's how it will be displayed. You can put a space. It will give one space between. Or you can leave it default. It will display uh, on separate lines. So each character will be on one line and we'll jump to a new line. It depends on your application, how you're going to display it. And we will take some longer practical examples in next sessions. All right, uh, this is what I was explaining about the in indexes. I explained about them. We start from zero, we end by length minus one. 
and pay attention that you shouldn't exceed the last index. If you do so, you will get an exception raised and that's a problem index error. I explain about it. So you may use uh, try and accept. You may create an exce ex except exceptional, exceptional handler so that it helps you to catch index error if there is any. And usually, uh, as a professional programmer, you should use uh, extensively, you should use actually, uh, exceptional handling methods so that you make sure your program doesn't halt for any reason. Uh, we will see from now on, I'll try my best to include in any program some uh, exceptional, uh, exception handling pro uh, method or processing or actually an exceptional handler or multiple exceptional handlers so that we do not get any halt uh, in, while running our program. Okay, I explain also about the length of string. The way we provide len string is just literally like this way. The function len the length and then inside these parentheses the name of the string that we are willing to get its length. All right, let's not give more time here. Uh, one more application that's widely used, let's say I'm interested in concatenating or connecting or um, uh, getting two, um, two uh, strings to be connected together. So this is what we refer to by concatenation in a uh, technical term as a technical term, it's just like appending strings to one another. So we can use the uh, plus operator, the addition operator, in this case will not be exactly addition. We, we are not adding because this is not a mathematical process. We are concatenating here or appending one string to another. We can also use the augmented. If we are adding or actually not adding, again, I, I, I mistakenly said it. If we are appending, uh, a string to another string. So we have the first string to be displayed first or to be assigned first, then the next one. So we will have a concatenation process. We may use this augmented procedure of concatenation, or we may have just this con concatenation procedure by just plus sign. The, now, the thing that I have to explain um, is strings by themselves are uh, immutable. We cannot change them. What does it mean? Let's say I have the string now, uh, roses are red. Once it is assigned to a variable, you cannot change it. You can change this. It's already uh, um, uh, initialized or assigned and you cannot change. If you try to change, you, if you try to access any of these elements and change them, you will get um, a value error, I guess. Value type error, I think. Yeah, or no, type error type error you will get because the operation itself will not be allowed. And in that case, because these um, strings are not uh, mutable, we cannot change their values. What we can do is we can assign them by certain modification way or after we modify them to a new um, variable so that we will just reference a new string, totally new string. So initially, if you create a string, you cannot change it you can modify it and assign it to another variable. That's possible. So I hope this point is clear. Once a string is assigned, you cannot change it under the same name. You can create a new string using this one, modify it by a certain way, and then assign it to a new. So that means we take a copy and modify that copy and assign it to a new um, variable name. That's possible. So if we are concatenating strings, that means we are creating a new string. We can assign it to a new variable and that's possible like this. Look at this. Earlier we used this object-oriented programming. Let's say um, we have another string, string one, but Python and string two uh, uh, programming. So let's say we create string th uh, three and it's just the addition of these two or actually the appending of string one and string two. So we append string two to string one. So string one, whatever available here will be uh, the first, uh, will be listed first. So it will be the beginning of the string created here. Then next to it, this one will be attached or appended. So that's why I kept some space here. Otherwise it will be directly connected with no space. So you need to pay attention to uh, this concatenation process where you leave the space if it is necessary or needed. Okay. So as I said, we are creating a new string by uh, concatenating or appending these strings. So that's why we assign it to a new string.
okay? I mentioned about the immutability of strings. We cannot change their values. We cannot access to certain index and change it. That's not possible. Let's say uh, string one, let, let's say, say string one, uh, index maybe zero, I change P, capital P to, to lowercase p or small p, it will not be accepted. It will give you an, an exception uh, or it will raise an exception. In that case, you will have a problem and your program will halt. Uh, you can take a copy like this, for example. Yeah, type error I mentioned about it earlier because this type doesn't accept actually. The, the object of string doesn't support uh, the change or the amendment of uh, a ready or a created string or a, an assigned string. So that's why we cannot uh, change the um, characters of a string after assigning it. We can take a copy from that string, modify that copy, that's possible. Okay. Um, look at this. For example, for some reason, uh, I do this. I have uh, a name which is referencing a string and then let's say I change, I concatenate this name with another string. What happens? So what will happen is like this. The initial reference will be totally canceled. That means it's, it will not be deleted, but we will be referencing a new string. We are not changing the initial one. It will not change. What we are doing is this variable name we take it and we assign a new string with it. We are not changing the first one. You, will, you cannot. That's not possible. Only the referencing matter. So the initial string will not be referenced. Uh, sorry, will not be referenced. And it will not have a reference. And ultimately, it will be uh, collected by the garbage collector from the program. It will be just removed as a string with no reference after some time. Uh, maybe we'll explain about uh, this uh, garbage collection later on in advanced topics, not now. Uh, but our variable name will reference a new string, and this one will never change. We cannot change it. We cannot amend it after it is being assigned here. Okay. Slicing very similar to the um, lists and tuples. We can apply actually specifically lists. We can apply uh, slicing or actually taking certain span or certain slice from the string, very similar to the lists. So we define the start and the end, and we will go from start until the end minus one inclusively and will not be included. So you determine uh, how many characters you would like to uh, display or get or return as a copy. You can assign it also to another string. This is possible. So you may go from zero, the beginning, or you may not specify zero. That means it will be de by default the uh, beginning zero. And you can specify the end. It depends on your application. So what kind of slicing you are applying or what kind of uh, outcome you are looking for. You can use the length as the end. You can leave this one, drop it out, and it will be uh, from the beginning until the end or from start until the end, the last element of the string. It depends. Very similar to what we explained about lists uh, in the previous chapter. Okay. Look at this. For example, we have the name of the uh, university. I wrote it in English character, so we will just write it this way, Frat University. So in this case, um, we can slice uh, from the beginning. Why? Because we didn't specify any start. That means by default, it will take start from the start. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We said the last or the end minus 1. So we are taking 0. The first index is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. This will be our uh, output. This is the slice that we are getting or the span we are displaying for that. Okay. Um, you can try to display another one. Let's say we take another different slice from 2 to 5. So we already know 5 that until here inclusively. Okay, until t. So from 2, so 0, 1, 2. So it will be a rat. Okay, this is just like, um, you know, a display of some uh, procedure slice. Maybe you can take from the end also it's possible. When you take such a thing, uh, we'll take from 6 until the end. Maybe you can uh, specify some negative value here. It will start from the end and it will go backward. That means let's say you put minus, um, let's say minus 5. It will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and that will be displayed. 
it depends on your application and will count one two three so minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five so let's say so in that case it will display to you our city uh, if you place here minus five for example so you will reference the slice from backward exactly similar to the list okay um, testing searching and manipulating strings we can manipulate strings by using different methods we can also search within strings either search for a character or a string within a string we can do these two for searching a string within a string we, we can use in operator is very similar to item in list so if it is available in the list the, the, the method will return or the outcome will be true otherwise it would be false so now if we are looking for string 1 in string 2 the outcome will be either true or false it's boolean it depending on whether string 1 is available in string 2 or not if it is it will return true to you and this is extremely useful while searching for uh, a substring within a longer string okay we can use not in similar to um, the application of lists if string 1 is not in string 2, it will return true, otherwise it will return, return false. So it depends on your application, whether you are look, looking for the lack of existence of a string with another, another string, or you are looking for the existence of a string with another string. Okay. Um, also, we may uh, think about so many methods. We cannot cover all of them here. We will just cover the most uh, applicable ones or the most frequently used ones. We can use string name dot method name and then providing an argument. So method here will change based on the method type or the method name actually, what we are going to do. Uh, we have different types of methods. That, now let's just go directly to them and explain about them or kind of these methods that we have and the, the type of applications that they are used for. Is uh, alphanumerical what does it mean so if we have a string dot is alphanumerical will return true if the string pr provided here oh, sorry the string that we have here is uh, because sh string name dot the method name like this string name dot method name so if we use let's say str1 dot is uh, alphanumerical it will return to us true if the string is composed of either alphabet okay so alphabetic letters a to z capital or small lowercase or uppercase and digits from 0 to 9 so any combination of those will return to you true otherwise it will return to you false if there is any special character or um, whatever null or space or no null is okay space or whatever included in the uh, string it will return to you false maybe if you use a special character as dollar or uh, percentage sign or ampersand or any it will return to you false let's say is alpha that means we are looking for alphabet only from a to z uh, lower case or uppercase it will return true otherwise it will return false whatever the character available in the string so it may be any character let's say uh, as dollar that case we don't have only alpha we have special characters so it, it will not be alphabetic letters so we are just looking for alphabetic letters if alphabetic letters it will return true okay is digit so from 0 to 9 if it is from 0 to 9 whatever the number of digits it doesn't matter but it should be just digits so is the is, is digit will return to you true if the a string is composed of pure digits no decimal points we cannot have mantisa because decimal point here will be a special character it's just a period dot it will not be accepted as a digit is lower it will check if your string is lower case and we consider alphabetic letters okay so we speak about alphabetic letters is space so it returns true if the whole string is just uh, is, is composed of white spaces white space is not only just the tab no it's composed of backslash n jump to a new line or also the backslash t the tab so we can have the space just space or the tab backslash t uh, five spaces or whatever is uh, considered in your system backslash n the jump to a new line all these are spaces okay 
is upper is very similar to lower, but it, it works the opposite way. If the, the string composed of alphabetic letters um, is composed of uppercase letters, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. Now, you may ask me, how about if it is mixed type? Well, mixed type, you can use alphanumerical, that's possible. If it is mixed other than uh, numbers and uh, alphabetic letters, then you cannot apply to it exactly those. Is the uppercase and lowercase or uh, is digit or alphabet? No, they are not applicable. You can have other uh, methods to apply uh, for it. Maybe you can separate uh, this method, uh, this string later on and check maybe alphabets if you can uh, separate uh, in, like uh, the part of the alphabetic letters and the part of numbers, maybe you can separate them. We will see. We, we, we may have a, a lot of applications that require actually separating uh, the digits from the alphabetic letters. Okay. Uh, we explain about those. Now, sometimes we need to change a string. Well, we said it's immutable. How can we change it? Well, how, how about we take the string itself, we create the customized copy of it the way we like, then after that we assign it to a new string. That's the way we can actually um, create the modification or the copy, the customized copy the way we like. That's possible. So we cannot change the essence of our own uh, assigned or declared string. However, we can take a copy and customize that copy and assign it to a new string. This is possible. How about if we, uh, I gave this question before, if you remember as a, in practical, uh, we were um, running like a menu driven uh, program where we were inspecting if the user was uh, entering Y or, or not or any other, uh, I mean, uh, letter or uh, whatever. Uh, is it Y? It was three, I think, yeah. Well, if, if Y, yeah, I think we used once Y letter. We, we said, like, maybe the user will press Y lowercase or enter Y lowercase or uppercase. We are not quite sure. So we included both of them, the uppercase and the lowercase of Y, and we compared. Now, in this case, you don't have to. You can receive the letter from the user or maybe yes. Uh, would you like to continue? Yes or no? So we are not quite sure if the user will enter yes, capital or small or uppercase or lowercase letters. So what we are going to do is we take that yes or no. It depends on your application. Let's say yes. Would you like to continue? Yes for yes. So you type yes. And in this case, you, you can take that yes from the user and convert it to either lowercase or uppercase. So you will guarantee that this will match with the lowercase or uppercase in your application. What does it mean? It means you are not sure whether the user entered yes, uppercase, or maybe just y uppercase, okay? And the rest is lowercase, the e and s. Then you convert all of it to lowercase and you compare to yes in lowercase, or you convert all of it to uppercase and then you compare yes to an uppercase version, and that's possible. We cannot convert the string itself. We convert a copy, and we assign it to a new reference variable. Okay? So lower will return a copy. Yeah, remember, a copy. It doesn't change the string. It just returns a copy. So it will return a copy of the string in lowercase. If it has um, characters, well, uh, other ca other characters or um, numbers, these will not be changed. There is no lowercase for special characters. Uh, there is no lowercase for numbers, so they will not be changed. If it is lowercase already, it will not change. Uh, we explained about the R strip. Do you remember? We were stripping the rear or the right side uh, space or white space or backslash n or jump to a new line. This actually helps you in stripping all the white spaces, not just backslash and we, because we were using it in files and in files we were using frequently, we were using backslash and we have applications and files with backslash T, but this was the most common one we were uh, applying in our uh, programs. So for this case, we were using the R strip to get this one stripped from the string because we are speaking about the right side of the rear uh, backslash n. 
Now we may have the leading uh, strip or the left side strip. That means we uh, strip the string or the white space from the left side of the string or the beginning of the string, leading part of the string. We may have a white space before the string, similar to the white space after the string. So you can strip the uh, leading, all leading uh, white space if it is backslash n or just normal space or number of spaces not just one maybe I press space multiple times it will be just uh, stripped from the string or backslash t is possible all types of white spaces okay uh, leading strip now maybe leading strip of a character not just the white spaces we specify the character that we would like to remove from the beginning of the string or from leading before the string. Imagine I have a string, it's beginning, uh, is assigned by asterisk. I want to strip this asterisk. I provide here in single quotes or double quotes asterisk, and will just strip that asterisk from the beginning of the string. We have a lot of applications similar to this, especially when we deal with um, some special type of uh, strings, like uh, with, uh, you can say, uh, a mark for a start. So the beginning of the string is marked by a certain character. There are applications for that. We will see. We'll have some um, uh, tutorial about it. Uh, we also can apply the rear strip or the back right side strip for a character, not necessarily white space like this. This is for white space because it's by default. You don't have to provide backslash n or backslash t or whatever. It, it will uh, clear or strip all the white spaces from the rear or from the right side of the string. This one, you have to provide a character. Maybe you can provide whatever the character that you are interested in stripping at the end of the string. This is possible. Uh, strip by itself as a default, it actually strips the string from the rear, from the leading, and from the rear or from left side and right side uh, white spaces. So if you want to get rid of the white space before the string and the white space after the string, the leading and the trailing white spaces, you can use S strip or sorry strip directly directly. If you specify a character for a strip, it will just strip that character from the beginning and the end of the string or leading and trailing of the string. Uh, you can use also upper to convert uh, or to create a copy of the string where the string itself is com converted or changed to uppercase. And as I said, if it is already uppercase, it will not change for, uh, I said about the lowercase, if it is uh, if the string that we are trying to convert to uppercase or a copy of it to uppercase, if it is already in uppercase, then nothing will happen. You will just have a copy of it in uppercase. If it has digits or special characters, these will not be changed. Okay. Um, suppose that I'm looking for uh, subsearch or searching of whether the string is starting by a substring or ending by a substring. Uh, for example, let's say you are running a search and trying to see last name of someone. Possible. So if you consider the name, full name as a string, uh, you can run the uh, search by surname or maybe uh, first name. Okay. So first name you can use starts with and provide the first name or substring that you are looking for and will return true if it is available. It will return false if it is not. And you can use also for ends with, this is like um, regional search. We will check whether this string ends by substring. It's not necessarily that we include white space. It's not necessarily that maybe it's connected. All the string is connected, but we are looking for just a regional search from the beginning or the end of the string. And here, we, uh, I have to say this. Uh, the sub search here in this case, or the type of search, regional search here, is a case sensitive. So if lowercase and uppercase, you are looking for a string, you have to match it in uppercase or lowercase. If you say I'm not quite sure which, uh, what kind of string I have, it, if it is lowercase or uppercase, then you convert it. So if you want to look for uh, uh, a string or a substring within a string, if if my string is starting by um, this substring or not, and you are uh, disregarding the case, that means 
case is it's not case sensitive search then what you are going to do is you take the whole string and convert it to lowercase and search with the beginning or the end in lowercase or take your string and convert it or take a copy of it actually convert that copy to uh, uppercase and make your search in uppercase and that's possible uh, we can also use find to search whether if uh, whether the string is substring is available in the string or not if it is available it will return to us the index where it is available where the lower or sorry the lowest index what does it mean now I may search for uh, a string within a string let, let me just go to this example here Real quickly okay for at university let's say if I'm looking for university here I, I find so I, I provide a string name dot find and I provide here inside university so for this university it will count 0 1 2 3 4 5 so the starting index where we find uh, the first university or the first string appearance will return to us so it will return 6 to us uh, there may be others so in that case, you have to modify your search and create your uh, continuous search all, over all the string. And we will see it in practically in tutorial later on, how we can search the whole string for one name or for one, um, not name, for one substring, not necessarily a name, I mean, for one substring, okay? All right, so we can use find, uh, to search for us whether the string is available or not and to return to us the uh, index of the first appearance. If it is not available, now you may tell or you may ask or may come to your mind that uh, how about if it doesn't uh, have that substring in the string. So in that case, it will return to you minus one and we know that minus one is not a possible index in lists and also in strings because we start from zero and we go to the end that mean that means length minus one imagine that i have a string and i am interested in replacing some of its uh, substrings by new substrings uh, you you will say again uh, but you said that strings are immutable we are taking a copy so here what happens, we are not changing, changing the string itself, we are creating a copy, customized copy, and returning it to a new reference. If you return it to the same reference, that means you are disregarding the initial string. That means you are creating a new string, referencing it by that variable and ignoring the initial string. So what happens? A string name dot replace and you provide a string with substring. For example, if you are uh, trying to code something, if you are looking for a name, certain name, and you want to uh, replace it by, let's say, a code, maybe hash code, you want to remove someone's name from a document or from a string because uh, you can copy all a file as we explained before the contents of all a uh, file you can just place it in a string or actually in a list it's possible and in that case let's say i want to hide the name of someone for maybe privacy i can replace that name by maybe hash code or maybe asterisk that's possible so in that case we can use substring uh, with a new String. So substring, let's say name, for example, person name. The new string that I, I would like to have it maybe hash codes, two or three or four or whatever, some hash codes, okay, or some asterisks. All right. So this is what we explain about these methods. Uh, are they uh, all the methods that we have possible with strings? No, there are so many others. There are so many. As I said, we cannot cover all of them, but in practical, if I see the application requires new strings other than those, I'll just explain them while we are taking the tutorial. Okay. A repetition operator. This is extremely um, versatile and useful operator that we use it also in lists. You are familiar with it. If you use this asterisk as a repetition operator and uh, provide here to the right side of a string, uh, an integer number, your string will be repeated n times. It's very similar to the list that we explained about before. You provide the, the string that you are interested in repeating and the number of times to be repeated and you provide an asterisk in between and that will allow you to get a number of copies based on the uh, number of integers or the, the amount, or sorry, the 
the number, the integer number that you are providing here. Have a look at this. Uh, well, we are frequently coming across this hashtag stay home or stay at home. There are both of them are available actually. So if let's say we have a string, is, is content is uh, the hash code or the hashtag stay home. Let's say if we multiply it, this is not multiplication, I'm just saying it, multiply it. This is the repetition. So if we repeat it three times, look what happens. It will just display this three times. We may put space in between, that's possible, but just keep it. It will repeat three times. It depends on the number that you provide here. You can just provide integer, not any other type. You cannot provide here 3.5, that's not possible. It should be an integer number, integer type, and that will allow you to repeat the um, the string number of times based on your own application. Okay, we have the last part, splitting strings. This is extremely, extremely useful and we have so many applications related, related to it. Imagine, um, we have so many applications with lists and lists are extremely flexible. So let's say I want to convert the contents of my string because a string could be a whole file. Okay, it could be a thousand words or million words, it doesn't matter. You want to convert it to a, to a list where you can manipulate the content of the list the way you like or you have some applications with lists more than uh, strings. You can use the method split. So string name dot split will help you or will allow you to get a list with all the words in the uh, string, uh, uh, what, sorry, the items of the list are the words of the string, and the uh, delimiter or this the the what determines what kind of letters or what kind of items we have is the white space. So they are separated by space in this case. So what will happen? This split will return to me uh, an, a, a list, and the content of the list is actually, uh, or the contents of the whole list uh, represent the words of the string and the, um, uh, how to say is the, the, the space in between is like they're separated by spaces. So it will split them based on spacing. So look here, I have a space, I included the space. If there is no space here, it will be just one element. So what happens? We will look for this white space and once we use, let's say hashtag here, uh, dot split, because hashtag is just a string. So we'll split the uh, hashtag because this content is stay home, space, stay home, space, five times. It will split it to five elements of a list. So it will convert this one. Hashtag one is a list. It's not a, a string. And it will, its contents will be these words of the string. And the elements will be marked by the space after each uh, word. So let's say um, programming in Python. So programming space in space Python. So if I say... Um, list one equals, um, let's say name dot split. Name is the content of programming space in space Python. It will return to me three elements: programming, second element in, the third element is Python. And this is the way we can create a string of the contents of a list. Uh, sorry, of a string. And we can manipulate this list the way we like because you know lists are immutable. We cannot change this one. This is a string. We cannot change it. We can replace it. What does it mean? I cannot change this stay home, but I can't replace all of it. I cannot change stay home because this is immutable, but I can change all of it and replace it with another uh, string or another element that uh, of my interest actually. Okay, this is the end of this chapter. Today we discussed strings as special type of uh, sequences. We discussed the iterating over strings or the iterative ways over strings. We discussed the repetition and concatenation of a string. We discussed also how strings are immutable and how we can create some copies of them based on our own customization or our own application. 
Uh, we learned also about slicing the strings. We learned about regional search of strings. Uh, we spoke about some methods, not all. We can never cover all of them. There are so many methods um, attached to strings. Also, we learned about splitting the string and converting its contents based on white space to a list. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this session. I will create a tutorial related to this or actually based on the contents of this chapter very soon. Until then, have a good time. Goodbye.